if you keep mishitting and shanking your forehand, I wanna give you two simple tips that are gonna really help with that. And I'm actually gonna throw in a bonus third, simple, all right, it's not such a simple tip, but it's really important, so I'm gonna talk about that as well. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, it would be great if you give me a thumbs up. It really helps me with the algorithm. And if you're not already a subscriber, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. Tip number one, and the single most important thing that you can do if you want to miss hit less forehands, is to do everything you can to watch the ball onto your strings at the moment of contact. Now, I know some people argue that you can't see the ball moving on and off the strings because it's moving too fast. Semantics, do not worry about it. You wanna get your eyeballs lined up with that contact point as closely as you can. If you can keep your nose lined up with that contact point, even better, but we definitely want the eyeballs lined up with it because it's just how humans function. When our eyeballs are looking at something, we can make more accurate movements surrounding whatever that thing is. Now, I know we see some professional tennis players hitting great forehands while lifting the head. If you've got world-class timing and world-class visual prediction, then you can probably get away with it as well. But realistically, if you had world-class timing and visual prediction, you wouldn't be watching this video and miss hitting your shots. So for that reason, the most important thing you can do is really try and Watch the ball onto your strings, keep your head still if you can a little bit longer, keep your nose lined up with that contact point, and it is going to make more difference than anything else. Now, the tricky thing here is that there are actually a lot of visual system requirements that go into your ability to watch the ball onto your strings. And unfortunately, a lot of adult tennis players' visual systems just don't function well enough because we've all grown up looking at books and then now phones and computers, so I just our visual systems don't work quite like they should do. The good news, though, is you can train that stuff and I've made a free program to help you with it. I'll place a link down there and I'll place a link up there so you can check that out if you want. The second most important tip that I can give you to help you hit the ball more cleanly and to miss hit less forehands is to try and make it easy on yourself by doing more work with your feet and setting up in better positions. Like again, we see the best players in the world, the ball's up around shoulder height and they can just crunch the ball, they can do whatever they want. But those things are so hard to do. For most people, it's gonna be easier to take the ball in between knee height and in between waist height in terms of the height of the contact. And we also wanna be thinking about how far you are away from the ball. A lot of people to get tend to get too close to the ball. So the ball's here, they're too close to the ball and they're kind of jammed and that can really cause them to miss hit a lot of balls. Obviously some players are too far away from the ball and they're reaching for it which can create a problem but getting too close to the ball tends to be a more common issue for people to have. But then we've got that height of the ball. Now you can't adjust what the ball's doing, it's doing what it's doing. So your job is to try and quickly recognize what's happening with the ball so you can either move forwards or so that you can move back to allow the ball to drop into the right point. Like again, Hitting the ball on the rise, yes, you could step in, you could take the ball on the rise to get it in this slightly uh, more ideal contact zone, but hitting the ball on the rise is a higher level skill. And if you're shanking a lot of forehands, the chances are that might not be the most effective thing to do. So the chances are if someone hits a deep ball, you wanna drop back, you want to give yourself space for the ball to drop back down into that contact zone. And if you really focus on being the right distance from the ball in terms of spacing and moving back when you need to, to allow the ball to drop into a more ideal contact zone, then you focus on watching the ball onto the strings. Between those two things, that's gonna solve so many of your problems. Now, again, this can be made a little bit trickier because in order for you to move back and to set up in the right position, you have to have good visual prediction and know where the ball's going. So for that reason, it might also be a good idea to grab the vision program, check that out and see how you get on with it. The third tip, and like I said at the start, this isn't quite as simple, but it is important enough for me to need to mention it in this video, is the reason that you're mishitting the ball might in large part be because you're trying to use a technique that's too advanced for you. Now, there's a kind of growing trend in YouTube videos and just coaching in general for coaches to teach the way that the pros hit the ball. Now, obviously, in terms of 
the way they hit the ball, it's amazing. They're the best players on the planet, but it's also not the easiest and not necessarily the easiest way to learn. The way the pros do it is the most biomechanically efficient and it allows them to generate maximum racket head speed at the moment of contact with minimum effort. And that's gonna be the key to really hitting with power and control. But it's a very, very high level skill. So the way that they kind of do a racket drop as they're driving through the hip, they then get a racket lag where they, the torso comes through, then the arm comes through, and they're basically turning their body into a, rip, a whip to throw the racket forwards at the moment of contact, that requires amazing timing to make that happen. And if you don't have amazing timing, it's basically gonna increase the likelihood that you're miss hitting shots. So what you might need to do is drastically simplify the way that you hit your forehand. So just think more about getting your racket behind the ball and hitting through it. You still want to be trying to drive through the hip, then the torso, then the arm. So you still want to use that sequential motion. But now what we're doing is, you know, the ball's going to be here. I've done my unit turn. I've got my coil. So I'm going to drive through the leg. But the ball's here. My racket's there. There's not too much to go wrong. I've just got to try and push through the ball and then allow it to follow through. Do the same thing from the open stance. So I've done my unit turn, but I've just taken my racket kind of behind the ball there. And now I can, I can just hit through the ball there. And one of the best players I play against, he's an absolute machine, very small take back, just as exactly what I've just described to you there, just boom, still creates a tremendous amount of power, obviously not as much power as Nadal, but who does? So he's still got a load of power, he still controls the ball really well with that very small take back. So potentially that's something you might need to consider as well. So simplify your stroke, and then if you've got a more simple stroke and you're really focusing on getting the footwork done, setting up in the right position and watching the ball onto the strings, those three things are kind of a recipe for a much cleaner quality forehand, especially if you start to work on your visual system and solve any problems that you might have going on there. So again, reminder, free program down there and up there if you wanna check it out. Okay, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If you have been struggling with shanking the ball a lot, implement what I've talked about here. I'd love you to come back and let me know whether it helped. Obviously, if you've got any questions, ask those as well. I'll get back to you as quick as I can, and I'll see you next time.